Hello, this is Eric Friedlander, your Secretary of the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. I was honored when the Governor asked me to be the Permanent Secretary of this Cabinet. Uh, not only because it's an honor to do that, and it's an honor to be a Secretary of any Cabinet in state government, but the reason I said yes and the reason I was so honored is because of you. I've told you before, I've worked here for 30 years in a variety of departments all around the cabinet. But being here at this time when we're doing unprecedented things is obviously a challenge, but an honor. And what you have accomplished throughout this, through the just past couple of months, I think is amazing. And it's one of the untold stories of, you know, we talk about the heroes, the governor talks about the heroes uh, across the Commonwealth. You're among those heroes. Each department of this cabinet has contributed in ways that I think we couldn't have conceived of before March. Uh, public health has been in the lead of this coronavirus response in ways that I think, again, no one could have imagined. Uh, this is a worldwide pandemic. It is a nationwide pandemic. We've struggled through shortages of personal protective equipment that we all now know what PPE is. We've struggled through shortages of testing. We're coming up with guidance that we never knew we had to come up with. Uh, we've dealt with winding down our economy quickly, standing up the emergency operations center, when oftentimes we're an adjunct to that process, we're leading that process now and leading it well. We're very fortunate to have the group of individuals at Public Health who are leading not only this cabinet, but this entire Commonwealth. So, an amazing job. In the Department for Medicaid Services, We've seen an increase in enrollment in Medicaid, but we've made many changes within Medicaid to our reimbursement. They're called 1135 waivers, so you Medicaid folks know what I'm talking about. Numerous changes that we had not planned for, and so you have risen to that occasion, and we've made really good progress on how we get our providers paid. That's how we support healthcare. That's how we support the entire network of healthcare. Again, something that doesn't go recognized every day, but without us, without Medicaid, without that funding, we wouldn't have a healthcare system. And I'm sure you know that. Within the Department for Community-Based Services, we moved thousands uh, from offices to homes and did it with a minimum of disruption. As a matter of fact, we're answering more phone calls in a shorter period of time than we ever have in family support. I've had individuals who've, who've called sort of out of the blue and told me about the great experiences they had getting eligible and working with DCBS. I can tell you that, that those things existed before, but I believe we have made dramatic improvements into our entire system in just two months. And social workers, I, I know you know, I always think that you are the uh, everyday heroes, and you are. And we haven't been able to provide you enough personal protective equipment because there's been a shortage. We are working on that. I want to assure you of that. But you've still done your jobs and you've still protected children across the Commonwealth. And for that, I thank you. And I'm worried, I know you're worried that we don't have enough eyes on our children and our families and, and those who were challenged going into this are only going to be more challenged coming out. So we have a lot of work to do. But here's the fortunate thing. We put in a plan about family first preservation, a prevention plan. That's going to be our model coming out. So we've got an exciting opportunity to, to work with DCBS and, and really change how we interact with families and children. Uh, the Inspector General's office, and this also relates to DCBS, we've made drastic changes around childcare. Uh, we've allowed some limited duration childcare centers. We've stood them up very quickly. 
you all, everyone rose to the occasion to get that done, and it is done. And we're providing as much support as we can to child care centers because we don't want to lose them. So that collaboration between the Inspector General's office and DCBS has been outstanding. And that's, that's a model that I've seen all across the cabinet. Uh, and as for our inspections, we're still doing inspections. We're still looking out for our seniors in our long-term care facilities. We have issued some uh, what they're called immediate jeopardies. Uh, and that's, that's right. We need to continue to do our job. And, and for the Inspector General's office, thank you for doing that. Uh, we're just below the Department for Behavioral Health. Um, you know, you all have this unique position within the cabinet. You are service providers, uh, as in your facilities, and you've had some challenges there, but risen to the occasion on those challenges and really stopped the spread of COVID in, in facilities that lots of folks have had trouble slowing down. But you've been able to do that so far. You've also helped provide and think about as we go through uh, the challenges on substance use, the challenges for individuals with uh, severe mental illness, uh, and working with our local partners, our comprehensive care centers, to be sure that they understand what they can do and in addition, all of you in the cabinet have received some of the things from me around taking care of yourself, uh, being trauma-informed. Uh, behavioral health has been a great help in coming up with those and, and making sure that we take care of each other and take care of ourselves and, and, and helping us understand how to do that. Within the Department of Income Support, uh, we've continued to work with county attorney's offices, um, and uh, even when they're challenged, and then in disability determinations, I think we were the first state to effectively do telework in the whole social security system and do it well. I think we're leading the country there. And it's because of your flexibility and because of your willingness to, to think about doing things differently. Again, something that's true across the entire cabinet. Uh, Ocean, our children with special health care needs, you know, uh, I used to be there. Uh, we've, we've embraced telework, we've embraced telehealth, and some of the medical staff there has actually gone and volunteered to, to help out with some of our state parks, uh, where we're providing some places for folks to go when they have no other place to go and they've tested positive. Uh, just another example of how different folks have, have stepped up during this time. A Department of Aging and Independent Living. We have delivered more meals with our partners than ever before. Uh, guardianship, you all are, are coming up with creative ways to make sure you stay in touch with your clients and hopefully make sure that they are as safe as they can be. M many things that we are keeping tabs on on our folks to make sure they're okay. You have done a tremendous job making sure of that. Uh, in the Ombudsman's office, that communication piece, making sure that we're answering our, our, our uh, new email box and, and inquiries from the general public when they're, when they're scared. And you all have done a fantastic job of that and thought about doing hearings in different ways with teleconferencing and things like that. Again, just the creativity that is has come out of just about every department in this cabinet has been amazing. Uh, AmeriCorps, uh, congratulations on uh, some additional grants and our competitive grants, but you've pivoted what folks have been working on to go into areas of need as you always have and helping support then as we think about different ways of supplying staff and supporting some of our facilities when they need help. Family Resource Centers, you just do what you always do. You support the schools, you support families and children in, in creative ways. And it's, it's something, your creativity has always been a part of your strength and you continue to demonstrate that. And then for the rest of the cabinet, we have what we call our staff support offices. These are the offices that, that make it possible for the rest of the cabinet, for the rest of the departments to do what I just described. Uh, the Office of Administrative Services, 
uh, your support in technology, your support in making sure that people could get home with computers that actually worked and they could actually work on the things that were important to their departments and to this commonwealth. You all have stepped up in ways, again, that I, I'm not sure we even knew possible. Uh, Office of Health Data Analytics, we're working on KHI and we're working on partnerships with our universities to, to help us model and understand where we might be heading. Those are very important tasks to start to think about where are we going, how do we uh, respond to what may be coming next. Uh, within legal services, I don't know how many executive orders and administrative orders we've put out throughout this, but there have been a tremendous amount, and the support that you've given me uh, has, been, has been critical, again, for this successful response to an unprecedented time. Uh, we've had a legislative session. Our, our, our team there has done a great job. We've you know, written the rules around regulations and, and those kinds of things, and, and uh, that's kind of the backbone to our response. So uh, again, how much I appreciate that. Everything we've done in human resources, again, this moving of folks home and moving to different tasks, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that without the support that you have provided. So uh, with all of that, um, of course, we've had about, uh, I don't know how many contracts and, and, and how many RFPs and had to do things very quickly under emergency circumstances. So OATS has, again, been, been fantastic. And, and those pieces have kept running. Our budget, we are going to have some unique challenges headed forward. But again, the support that we get and the communication we have with the governor's office and with the departments, that collaboration, and that's what we should be thinking about when we're in our support role, is fostering that collaboration. And I, I'm not sure I've seen that kind of collaboration in this cabinet, uh, maybe ever. So we need to continue to do that, which leads me to this. I'm not gonna be in any hurry to bring everybody back into this building, back into the offices. As a matter of fact, we might not ever do that completely. I think we've seen then in some ways, working from home, uh, the telework piece has been a success in a way that I don't think anyone anticipated. So when I say we, we may not ever get back, we may not get back to what was normal before, I think that's a good thing. I think this has given us an opportunity to look at how we do business, to look at how we treat everyone in the Commonwealth are, are the folks we're trying to serve and to do it in a way that helps them, I like to say this, I think I borrowed this from, from Louisville, but um, reach their full human potential because people reaching their full human potential, whatever their full potential is, that's what we try to support here. And I think that has come into clear relief We've seen that we serve the most vulnerable populations. We've seen that they're the ones that need the most help and support, and we're the ones to do it. Through SNAP, through Medicaid, through reaching out to clients, through case management, um, inspections, everything we do really helps support that. So we have an opportunity. I think uh, there's a, there's a saying that uh, something around with, with every crisis brings opportunity. This is a huge crisis. But we also have to think about it as a huge opportunity. What are those pieces that we've changed that we want to change? What are those pieces that right now, you know, everything's kind of pulled apart? How do we want to put that back together? Um, are there better ways? Throughout healthcare, throughout uh, social services, throughout our systems, what are those ways that we can serve the people that we serve, those vulnerable populations, better in a way that makes our entire state better? Uh, when I was in Louisville, I had a role. I was their chief resilience officer, and you know, I know sometimes people roll their eyes at that. 
But what that taught me was, as a community, as a state, we are only as resilient as the most vulnerable among us. This pandemic came through, hit our most vulnerable populations, and, and really spread to everybody. We are all in this together. And, and this virus has shown us that. So we need to make sure that we lift up and support those folks, those very folks that this cabinet is designed and called on to serve. So remember, we're all in this together. We will get through this and we will get through this together. And as I like to add, it is the only way we'll get through this. And our role, this cabinet's role, has never been more important. And your role has never been more important. And I'm proud to be the secretary of this cabinet because we have risen to the challenge and you have risen to the challenge. Thank you.